Dun, 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 dun. Oh my God, the, the background changed. It looks stupid, it fell over. God, I'm gonna have to fix it. And I'm gonna have to get my coffee. Someone's already on. Hi, how you doing? It is, we still have five minutes, so if you have questions, anything you wanna throw out there, we can get going. So we're doing chapter six, which is landlord tenant law. We talked about doing it. I absolutely have to go pick up my coffee out of the microwave because I'm gonna need it. My dog is down here totally gassy today. Dude, <laughs> God, you don't hear it. Hey, Isadora, how you doing? Where are you? Where do you live? Can you say? I mean, just like a city. Like you don't have to say the street address. <laughs> You're, happy Friday, Maria. You guys are early, you got here. We only have a few minutes to chit chat. Um, wait, wait, wait. Zen Gardens, you know, you should change your name so I know what your name is because I always see Zen Gardens and I really want to kidnap you so that you can do my side yard because that's right where I look out my window when I work and I really want that water fountain. I have no idea what it's going to cost me. You're in Fremont. You're way up there in Northern California. I just found out I get to go to New York in the summertime. My film got accepted to another Christian film festival. So we got, we got, um, what is that? Missouri and New York this year. North Carolina, is that where you're from? You guys are all just popping on real quick. We're gonna be learning landlord tenant law today. Um, what I wanna make sure everybody who's new, who's, oh my God, it's snowing there. Yeek, yeek, it's really cold. Oh, so anyway, um, we're gonna do landlord tenant law and um, we always start the actual class at 9.30 however we get on a little bit early so we can all chit chat i know you know what i'm beginning to love new york really like incredibly the california storm is here well it's just kind of drizzling right now it was raining really bad this morning and my dog didn't want to go outside and go pee and then it stopped just long enough for him to go outside good morning mark and it stopped long enough for wilford to go outside and he was peeing like for three four minutes i'm like dude but you know that's what happens when you have dogs so um, I'm excited today because I get to go get my hair done. I have five seconds for myself. Well, I guess it's going to be two hours because, you know, there's gray coming out here. But anyway, it's three minutes more and we start. So landlord tenant today. And um, we have Abby here in my living room studying. She's getting ready to go. Couldn't walk my dog for a few days. He's so disappointed. Yeah, I can't even say the word W-A-L-K in this house because as soon as I say that, and I grab their leashes, they just go ballistic. And, but I haven't been able to walk them, not because of the rain, because of my foot. You live in Barstow. It was snowing this morning in Barstow. You're in Barstow? I love Barstow, it's a cute little town. We go through there when we go to Mammoth. So I wanna snow ski this year so bad, but they think that the tenant in my ankle needs to be sewed back together, which that'll suck. I'll, I'm, gonna ruin, I'm gonna lose the whole ski season this year. Um, maybe I could go water skiing this year. I don't know. We'll see. It was so awesome. We had a student that had a boat and we used to go, we took our real estate group out to Lake Elsinore and we'd water ski in the morning. And then like right around nine o'clock, we'd make all our car calls to our clients from the middle of the lake. It was so fun. You know, this career is the most awesome career you could have because you could work from wherever you want. You could be like sitting on the beach. Like I was showing people houses. They were from another area. There's a lot of snow in Big Bear. I know, but I have a fear of Big Bear because I actually broke my ankle at Big Bear. I went down the Black Diamond, I went really fast across, and I cartwheeled this way and my ankle went that way. And that was the only time I ever had to go down on one of those orange things that they put you on. And it's really bumpy, they drag you down the hill. But um, I've been snow skiing since I was four, and then I went and I snowboarded, because um, my son and my boyfriend at the time kept saying, you got to snowboard. So I snowboarded and broke my ankle. And it took, I broke it, I even remember the date. December the 9th, I broke it and I didn't get the boot off until April. The older you get, the longer it takes to heal. Let's see what time it is. In one minute, we start landlord, tenant. So you guys are all over the place. And don't be scared to take the test. Go in there for the first time like you don't care, like it's a trial run. And the second time, you're gonna go in and get your license. Don't overthink it. Abby's here overthinking and kind of freaking out. She needs to breathe. Need to breathe. Breathe. And make sure you had a, a good night's rest. That drive up to Big Bear is scary. Yeah, it is scary. And you're a guy. Um, it, but you know what? I have a truck. And um, 
sometimes my son borrows my truck because my truck has uh, mine's mine's a Hummer, and if you crash in a Hummer, you're pretty good. But his truck is like this big, huge, long. Um, it's the new one. It's a Ram truck, and he had to order it special. It's super pretty. If you go on my TikTok, you could actually find his truck. I think his um, his trucks on the Hummer. I mean, his trucks on the Hummer. His trucks on my TikTok, and so is his Range Rover. But I haven't gotten him to let me drive his Porsche yet. He's just a brat. But anyway, um, so it's 9.31, and of course, Willie came to sit right by me so he could let his gas be known. So we are on Chapter 6, Landlord-Tenant. We started a little bit of Landlord-Tenant. So if you don't have the book, you can always listen to this over and slowly write the things I say about Landlord-Tenant Law. We talked about how the landlord is the less or, O-R, and the tenant is the less E, E, E. And we talked about a lease is a contract for a set amount of time. And a rental agreement is different from a lease because usually rental agreements are month to month and leases are a longer period of time. But it says a lease is a contract for a set time, typically one year or longer. A rental agreement is different in that it usually is month to month or monthly basis. So we also talked, talked about um, leasehold estates and less than leasehold estates. That's actually where we are going to start. So we are in chapter six. It's page 157 in this book that you guys know I got. Apparently it's selling out everywhere. Um, I don't know how it could sell out so much because there's only about 350 of you guys following me um, going back to the thing to watch it. But eventually, <clears throat> maybe there'll be more. So a leasehold estate is personal property. Remember, if you're renting or you're leasing, you don't own, so it's personal property, okay? And you have personal property rights. Remember, you also, uh, you know, there's a lot of rights against landlords, and President Biden is coming out with a uh, <clears throat> tenant's bill of rights, something to that effect. And I don't know when the landlords are gonna come out and have a landlord's bill of rights because we're the property owners, and property owners should have rights. Um, when we're renting to you guys or anybody, um, when you're renting to somebody, you, you don't have the right to go on the property though, because they have person. God, what is going on with Willie? The poor dude. If I had gas like that, I'd be like miserable. I'd be rolling <laughs> over, man, dude. Okay. It's gotta be those cookies I give him. Okay. No more cookies. We're going to stick with the peanut butter natural cookies. Whoa. Even the candles aren't doing anything. <laughs> I can't breathe in here. It's bad. Anyway, poor dude. Maybe I could give him gas <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, um, as discussed before, with less than freehold estates, there is no direct ownership of real estate. They are chattel real. God, it's. I'm sorry. It's just really bad today. It's got to be those other. Those. Oh God. <laughs> Smells like he pooped in here. My God, you guys, I know. I, it's so bad, my eyes are watering. I can't even, I can't even focus. Yo, baby. <laughs> poor dog, poor guy. It's making my eyes water. Anyway, so a chattel reel is personal property estate, such as a lease. We call this type of interest in property a lease or a leasehold estate. A leasehold is an exclusive right to occupy. So the landlord can't come in anytime they want. They have to let you know at least 24 hours ahead of time. And they also have to have an emergency. They can't just come over anytime they want. I have a property in Fullerton and um, I rented it to a lady. I like to, I like to rent to single parents because I feel like they're the ones who need more help than anybody. Because let me tell you, when you have children and you're doing it all by yourself, it can get difficult. And so she rented my property when her son was 10. And I can tell you right now, I think I went there twice from the time he was 10 to the time he was 18. And now I have the new tenant there. So when she moved out, my friend moved in four years ago. And I think I've been there twice. And it's only when they asked me to come over for something. So anyway, let's go on. So by paying rent, you have the right to what's called quiet enjoyment. They're going to ask you on your state exam what quiet enjoyment is. Uh, or, or they say something about a noisy neighbor. It's not that, okay? Quiet enjoyment is a landlord has to give the tenant the right to be left alone, okay? So it says, which is interesting because the other day my mom went over to one of her rental properties and I'm like, why did you go over there? I think I mentioned this the other day and she's like, because I really like him and I just wanted to say hi. I'm like, you can't do that. She doesn't understand that because she's 91. 
So when you have an older landlord, they tend to come and visit you because they're lonely, I think. Because I had another lady, excuse me, I had another lady that was a landlord and we went to meet over there to list the property for sale and she just walked in on her tenant that was taking a shower. I'm like, whoa, that's scary. Anyway, so um, there's no ownership rights in real property when you have a leasehold estate. The owner has reversionary interest, which means that he or she can regain possession at the end of the lease. I've never seen that, so don't worry, it's not on the test. Reversionary interest, that's not on the state exam. So you just need to know that, I don't know, for the real world, if you're gonna do landlord-tenant stuff. So estate for years. Estate for years is all over your state exam. The estate for years, I think that they just made it up so they could test you on it and see if you read your material. Because an estate for years isn't years. It could be, it could be a week, it could be a month, it could be six months. But on the state exam, there's two, two examples of an estate for years. One that I know of. There's one that is the people rent a storefront building for six months. What kind of estate is it? And that's an estate for years. And then there's a family that rents a property. It's a vacation home. And it's in September of 2016. And they rent it to January of 2017. And what they ask you, what kind of estate is that? And it's an estate for years. So let's see if this book has any more interesting stuff about a state for years. So a state for years is a lease for a predetermined amount of time. A conveyance of an estate in real property such as a lease to someone for a certain length of time is called a demise. I've never seen that on the test, don't, so don't worry about it. It's spelled D-E-M-I-S-E. -E. An estate for years is an agreement in advance between the leasee and the lesser for the use of the property for a fixed period of time. As stated earlier, a lease is a contractual agreement to possess and use the property for agreed, predetermined time. If a lease period is longer than one year from the date of signing, it must be in writing and signed by the lessor. So technically, the leasee, the renter, does not have to sign the lease. I don't know, that's really weird, but I knew that for a long time. So the lessor is the owner, sometimes referred to as the landlord, and the leasee is the tenant. Proper screening of tenant application requires a non-refundable fee of up to $35 or $30 paid by the tenant. So when they say $30 paid by the tenant, um, I don't know that it's that, that's at $30 now because we have to run a credit report. And credit reports, by the way, in case you guys didn't know, all the credit reporting companies raised their price in January. So I think they went from like $30 to $65 to run a tri-merge. So when we do real estate, to purchase property, we do a tri-merge, which is all three of the major credit repositories. I know, what a horrible name, repositories. Sounds like something else. I don't know. Anyway, so it costs us that, and what we do is we run the three and we merge them. And what happens is we get three scores. And let's say that you're buying a property with your fiance or your spouse, whatever, you're buying it with somebody else, and they have three credit scores, they have three credit scores, and you have three credit scores. We throw out the high one, we throw out the low one, and we take the middle score from both borrowers. And whoever has the lowest score is the one we have to use, which kind of sucks for the other person, to be honest with you, because I had a couple that they were buying, and she had a 780, and he had a 620. And that's not good, okay? 620, we could still go FHA, but they're gonna hit us and when I say hit us, we say hit, that's what we say. We say they're gonna hit us with an add-on. So how we talk in, in the real estate world is funny because like I when you're when you're dating somebody that's in the same world that you're in, like my ex-boyfriend was a loan officer, or so was I, um, it's easy to talk to you because you're like, we're, well, you're gonna get hit with this or you're gonna do that, or and we know what we're talking about. But when I date somebody who's not in the real estate world, they look at me like I'm talking another language. So you try to make it as clear as you can when you're talking to clients. So if your credit score is 740 or higher, you get the best interest rates. But when you start coming down, literally if you have a 739 versus a 740, you're gonna pay anywhere from a quarter to a half a percent higher on your interest rate because of your credit score. So credit is really important. However, right now we have, I, I better say my license number so I don't get in trouble, a 101-8706 broker because I'm quoting what's going on right now in the interest rates. So what's going on right now is there's a program for first time home buyers where it's 3% down with no loan limit, with no um, 
with no purchase price limit, with no income limit, with 3% down, and um, they're not hitting you for your credit score. So if your credit score is lower, they're not gonna hit you for it, but you do have to do a home buyer education. So that's something that one of my clients is doing right now, going on. And what I was gonna say about the credit on leasing is what's really interesting, and I don't know if it's gonna pass or not, and it's super funny, because I was thinking about it on the way to a meeting I was going to, and when they talk about discrimination, there's all kinds of discrimination. And I, when I was renting to my lady who had six children, she literally called me before she even put in the application and asked me, she said, you know, I keep getting approved, but as soon as they find out I have six children, they say I can't move in. And I'm like, that's discrimination. And she said, yeah. And I said, but, you know, how are your children? I mean, how do they act? And she said that they were like the children on the sound of music. When you blow a whistle, they all line up. And I was kind of joking with her, and I'm like, you know, we could try it. Why would I not want you to, I mean, it's, I mean, she had great credit, she had great income and everything else, but people were discriminating because she had six kids. Well, the new thing that I was thinking about, and I was literally thinking about on my way to the meeting, I'm like, you know, before we know it, they're gonna say that we can't check credit scores because it's credit discrimination. And I guess I was kind of joking with myself, but we got to the meeting and they mentioned it. They said, credit discrimination. I'm like, are you serious? Because if somebody has really crappy credit, I gotta know because if they're not gonna pay their rent, I can't afford to rent to them because I gotta pay my house payment. Uh, you know, people out there, and I don't know, the government thinks that us land and landlords and landowners don't have house payments. Well, the house payment I have in Irvine, the payment is $5,800. So if my renter doesn't pay, I can't pay my rent because I'm not gonna come up with an extra $5,800. So um, when I talked to my uncle about this, because my uncle's an investor also, he has units that are small units, one bedroom, one bath, that are $800 a month, and he's in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and he said that it's better to have one small units, a bunch of small units, because if you have a bunch of small units and somebody doesn't pay you, then it's not gonna kill you to make the payment, and you're gonna be able to clean out the unit, get a new tenant pretty quick, Whereas California is the way to woke. Is California the way to woke? Um, I don't know. It's just, it's kind of crazy over here. And um, Santa Fe, New Mexico is beautiful. I almost moved there when I was in high school because it was so pretty there. And um, I mean, all these other places are not taxing us the way that they do. And we were, I was at a government meeting last night. I actually posted it on my YouTube. Um, they didn't videotape enough of it for me to do, I mean, on my TikTok, on my TikTok, on my YouTube. So I posted on my TikTok because it wasn't long enough for my YouTube. But the guy was talking about um, how, I, I don't know who does our finances in California because they collect so much money from us that, yeah, last year they had such an overage that they were sending out these cards that were $300 to everybody. So we all got a whole $300 after we all paid taxes. And then now they're saying we have a deficit. It's like, how can we go from a $100 billion um, overage to like a $300 million deficit. It's like, who's doing the accounting? I mean, aren't they supposed to be somewhat educated? I'm just saying, just saying. I mean, we have to do our accounting, so maybe we should take them accountable. How about that? I'm getting on a rampage, so we'll go on. So real estate from period to period. Periodic tenancy renewal of each period. An estate from period to period is not on your state exam. Have you seen that on the state exam? A state for period to period? Yes, period you to period. You have? have? Okay, I so have. listen to this carefully because here it goes. She says it's on the exam. An estate for period to period is periodic tendency and continues from year to year, month to month, or week to week, or from any other designated period to period. This period to period tendency, which is automatically renewable, is called a rental agreement as previously stated, a rental agreement is agreement between a tenant and a landlord for com continuing periods of time. So the difference between a state for period, a, st a period to period, and an estate for years is an estate for years doesn't seem like it's renewable. It's from one point to another point and you're done. But a periodic tendency is renewable every time. Does I that answer that question. the question? Yeah. That's, that's the question period. on the test. From period to period is renewable and consistent. Whoa, that's good that you're sitting here. Maybe I should have yeah, students sit in my in my kitchen with me all the time when I'm teaching. And that's the first word that's what I remember is the question starts period. The like. question starts with period yeah. to period, right? Cool. And it's renewing. Is that what the answer is? It should be. Yeah. I don't the, remember what I put, but I remember I had that. It has that. So that's the answer if you didn't put it last time. It's renewable. 
So maybe I should invite students to my house. That's a cool idea, right? Yeah. Yeah. Who have taken the test before that I'm helping out, right? Yeah, it's like a TED Talk. And um, I know, it's like, it's like, <laughs> so, and we'll help you guys know um, what you need to know. How about that? So it says, this period-to-period -period tendency, which is automatically renewable, that might be what's the answer on the test, is called a rental agreement. As previously stated, a rental agreement is agreement between the tenant and the landlord for continu continuing periods of time, usually month to month. Rental agreements do not expire. Notice must be given by one of the parties. So you have to usually give a 30-day notice when you're going to be moving. Written rental agreements have become the most commonly used um, real estate agreements in the United States, probably in California too, because most people, 60%, I think, um, last I heard was 50%, but I upped it because I know that there's a lot of renters. They are usually, um, it says they are used frequently when renting apartments, duplexes, houses, condominiums, and other type of rental property. The California Association of Realtors, that's us. Because you know what? That's what we say. We say um, that's who we are. Um, has a residential lease or month-to-month -month rental agreement form that covers all basic conditions desired such in the contract. A landlord holds, we said, that revisionary right to the property. Have you ever heard that word or seen that word on the test? I've never seen that word. Which one? Rever reversionary rights. I haven't no. seen that anywhere but in this book. And I'm a landlord. No. So it says, it re that means that the landlord grants the tenant the right to occupy that retains the right to retake possession after the lease or rental term has expired. Periodic tendency is usually terminated when the appropriate party gives a 30 or 60 day notice. I don't know if you guys know this, but if you live there for a year or less, it's a 30 day notice from the landlord to the tenant. If they live there for more than a year, it becomes a 60 day notice. And what they're trying to do in California is instead of being able to collect two months deposit, we're only going to be able to collect one month deposit. So look at this. If you can only collect one month deposit, so you have one month in reserves, and then they go over a year and you have to give them a 60-day notice, right there you're probably going to lose two months if you have a not very nice tenant. Um, and the thing is, is I don't understand why people think that they should be able to live in your house for free because, like I said, we have to pay our house payment or we'll get lates on our credit and then we'll get bad credit. So I, it, it's, I don't know, you guys. We all need to be treating each other with respect and what would we want done to us if you were, you know, if the tenant was a landlord, how would they feel if somebody was living in their house for free? I just don't get how people get brought up. It's crazy. So if the rental period is less than one month, that's really short, then only one period, so a month. Notice is required. For example, if a tenancy has a week to week, only seven days notice is necessary. So if you have a week to week, you only give them a seven day notice. If you have a month to month, you give them a 30 day notice. A state at will, I'm gonna ask you, state at will, was that on the test that you know? State at will, yeah. State at will, was it? Yes. State at will. So a lot of these things are on the test that were not in the cram course that I used to teach for another company. I should go through this book with you and see what we should add to the class. I mean, because she's remembering some of this stuff. So, and she's going to go in today and remember more stuff. Yeah. But she's not going to yeah. write it on her arms because they ask you to show your arms when you walk <laughs> At out. All moments, yeah. It's crazy. But don't do that on purpose. I'd rather have you pass than freaking out about what you want to remember. So, a state at will, tenancy at will is uncommon. And a state at will can be determined at the will of either the lessor or the lease E and has no fixed duration. That's interesting. The state at will has no fixed duration by California statutes. The parties involved must have a notice to terminate since a periodic tendency is automatically created when a landlord accepts the rent. There is no true estate at will in California because in California, as landlords, whoa, I'm telling you, we have no rights. That's why we need to make a landlord a landlord rights. If they're making tenant rights, makes sense that we should have landlord rights. And a state at will can be terminated by either the lessor or the lessee. State of sufferance. I like this one because I joke about it. I, I, I had an estate of sufferance. This lady would not move out and I had new tenants moving in. So the state of sufferance occurs when the lessee, who has rightfully come into possession of the land, retains possession of the property after the expiration of his or her term. So, for example, I have 
at my house in Irvine. I had a lady that was there. And most people who go there, I really are mentally prepared for them to stay longer because they always say they're going to stay a year. And they are always stay two or three years. It's in a really great community. So this lady and her family were at my house. It's not the one with the six kids. It was a different one. And she she's the one that had all the computers. And um, story, story, there's Mark. Oh, you should see the story about this lady. Um, her she worked for a company that was out out of out of the country and her her boss was paying her rent I don't know what they were doing to be honest with you I think they were doing money laundering in my personal opinion I don't know I I, I can't really say but all I know is her boss was in I don't know I, I forgot where he was but he was in another country he was paying the rent for her and her and her daughter and their son were all working for them and like I said, I think yesterday, I don't know how many computers were in that house, but they had all these computers set up and they were working on something. And then, at, and then at the bottom of their desk, they had more computers that were brand new in new boxes. And um, when I went to terminate, when I went to make her move out, she wouldn't move out. And um, what she was doing, check this out. So when I put my place up for rent, she had lived up the hill. And I think what she did at the end of all her leases is she didn't pay the last few months. So she was like behind with them six months. But because landlords in California, you guys get this crap. This is really crazy. So if somebody, it used to be if somebody's evicted and they were they were evicted and it showed on their credit, it showed that you did an unlawful detainer and the unlawful detainer showed on the renter's credit. And if it shows on the renter's credit, when I rent credit, I am not renting my house to somebody who had to be forced out of the last property they were at. But what happens is when you go to court on an unlawful detainer, in order to negotiate the tenant, you know, they say, well, if you don't show the unlawful detainer on my credit, I'll get out by this date. And if they don't get out by that date, then you're allowed to put the unlawful detainer on them. Well, it used to be that the unlawful detainer showed all the time, and that was not a negotiating issue. So for landlords in California, we could see when we ran their credit, but now they're negotiating them off, which I don't think is right, because you can't negotiate bad credit off, but they can negotiate that off in order for you to get your property back. And what that does is to the next landlord, we don't know that they were a bad tenant, so we rent the house to them, like the guy that I rented my house to that had the ankle bracelet on. He was evicted, and because I didn't know he was evicted, I rented it to him. The, very, the deposit check bounced, and the very first rent check bounced, and then COVID happened, and he was in my property for almost two years. So, and I couldn't get him out. So as a landlord, I don't really think that's right. And, you know, we're all just trying to make a living and survive. And so to do that to somebody, I don't see how you can look in the mirror and think that that's okay. I mean, it's super interesting because I'm taking care of my 91-year-old mom and her money right now. And I'm literally moving money for her and protecting her. And I think about it and I think about the person that was taking care of her money before. And um, I know what they did. And I know what the... the my mom and my brother had a caretaker that stole my mom's credit card information and put $9,000 on her credit card. I don't know how he could walk in her house and take care of her and my brother and look them in the face knowing that he stole $9,000 and he bought a bunch of airline tickets. I just don't get how people do that. It's so wrong in so many ways. I mean, there's a movie, there was a show called Logan's Run and Logan's Run was where when people stopped giving um, contributing to society they were brought into like look like a dental office and they were given a, a shot and they were euthanized so I mean that's kind of bad because what if you can't prove they did it but if you really catch them I don't know our world is so crazy right now um, anyway so back to what we were talking about because I got off on the landlord tenant thing so some of you guys can fast forward that should I count to 10 so you can fast forward it and then get back to where we're supposed to be so a state of sufferance, what they did is I had new tenants that were ready to move in on June 1st. They were gonna be paying the rent that was a little bit higher than the people who hadn't paid for four months. And when they didn't pay for four months, I had to try to evict them. It took two months to evict them. So that was six months of lost rent while the other people were nice enough to wait because they really wanted to be in that house. So the state of sufferance is when they're not moving out at the predetermined time. People suck. Well, not all of them do, Mark. Some people are good. I mean, you just have to find the good people. And we're all trying to connect so that everybody that's good people hang out together. And we all do that doomsday stalking. 
I'm stacking, stocking, doomsday stacking, so that when something goes bad, we have food. I have lots of water because I have a swimming pool. I mean, I don't think we want to drink the chlorine, but hey, water's water, right? Anyway, so a state of sufferance occurs when a leasee who has rightfully come into possession of the land retains possession after the expiration of their term. An estate of sufferance does not require a notice of termination because the expiration of the lease is an automatic termination. If the landlords accept any payment of rent, the lease reverts to a periodic tenancy. So what you have to know is what leases, if you have a lease for a certain amount of time, inside the lease it says, if you accept the next payment, then it turns into month to month. So I don't know if you guys knew that. So minimum requirements of a lease or a rental agreement. As long as there's intent to rent, the creation of the lease requires no particular language and can be either a written or oral agreement. A lease or rental agreement must have a minimum of these four items. Four, length of duration, amount of rent, names of the party, description of the property. That's really easy, right? And then in the book, they have a copy of a rental agreement. And the rental agreement spells out everything that's in there. Pool party, I know. Um, where are you, Mark, anyways? Aren't you like in Hemen or somewhere far? Um, so anyway, the lease agreement is a few pages long. And then we'll go into, um, it says, it's on page 67, after you see the lease agreement. So the interesting part is people think that they could do all their own stuff and they're not real estate agents. And we have the forms as real estate agents, members of the California Association. Um, we have all the forms you need and you can't use our forms if you're not a real tour. So what that means is you, because it's copywritten and it has the California real estate agent logo on it. So you're not supposed to use it unless you're a member. And if you're a member and you're acting, if you're not a member and you're acting in the business of real estate and you have a license and you didn't join the association and you use our forms and you say you're a realtor, you could literally get your license suspended or revoked because we're that big. So we're pretty important when it comes to realtors, honestly, real tour, okay? So top of page 67, I feel like I've been going forever and it's only been 32 years. I know, okay, so yeah, you're in Hemet. I remember that. I told you my parents used to go out to Hemet all the time. We used to go there from Orange County and we had to take back roads and it was scary. I remember one time we were coming home from Hemet. And here's a little short story, mini Hemet story. So my, my parents, I think I told you my parents' friends owned that Tasty Freeze that's on the main road. And um, both of, I'm not sure if the husband passed away yet. Oh, I got a really good story. It's not a real estate story, but it's really good. So check this out. When my dad passed away about four years ago, um, Elaine and Elmer were the people in Hemet that we used to always go visit. And so I got two Elaine and Elmer stories. One, my mom was coming home from Hemet when my dad was out of town. She took us kids to Hemet and we're driving on this dark road and there's no freeway. What color are you going to do on your hair? Same color it is, but we're gonna get rid of all this gray and dark. It's gonna be this color, okay? Anyway. I thought about going dark and then I saw a picture of me with dark hair and I went, no, 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 that was scary. Um, so anyway, so my ex-husband was right. The one thing my ex-husband told me that he wanted me to do that I refused while I was married to him was to turn blonde because he said I would look way better as a blonde. And I told him then I'd have to get all new business pictures back to the, and I didn't want to do that because I had some great business pictures. But now that I see he was right, there's a couple of things he was right on. I'll give him credit for that. So anyways, he told me that I didn't know how to use my dishwasher. You know what? He was right. Same with the clothes washer. He had some good ideas. You just have to have an open mind. And I didn't have one at the time. So anyway, back to the Hemet story. We're driving back and um, my mom sees a man standing in the middle of the road and she doesn't know what to do because she doesn't want to stop because she's scared he's going to attack her or something. So right when she gets up to about to swerve, he disappeared. Isn't that bizarre? And we ended up making it home, obviously. That wasn't a very long story, but the other short story about him is this. Um, Elaine and Elmer, it's a ghost story, you guys. Well, it's not really a ghost story. I don't know what it is. You guys, there is another dimension. When we die, we're not dead. I'm telling you that right now because it was really interesting. So Elaine and Elmer moved to a place called Pleasanton, Cali no, they didn't go to Pleasanton. They went somewhere up north and they were up north and my parents were down here and my parents and Elaine and Elmer were really close. They both moved out here from Ohio. My parents moved first and then they came. A lot of people from Ohio came to California and they moved from Hemet to Northern California and they were up there and when she passed away, she fell and hit her head on, um, 
She fell and hit her head on the fireplace. And Elaine, I mean, and Elmer lived by himself up in Northern California. And so when my dad passed away, this is really crazy, you guys. When my dad passed away, Elmer called my mom. And he said, is Rich okay? You know, did Rich pass away or is something going on with Rich? And my mom goes, um, why? This was the morning my dad passed away. And wait, it gets better, freaky. This is freaky, are you ready? So he asked my mom and my mom goes, well, why do you ask? And he said, well, Elaine called this morning. Now remember, Elaine's dead. Elaine called this morning and she said to let you know that Rich is with her and he's doing fine and they're together. And if she can call back again, she will. And my mom went, what? And then my mom went to where my dad was at because um, he was at a rest home and he passed away around 11 o'clock. But Elmer said that Elaine calls him several times from wherever she's calling from after she passed away. And um, I don't know, I think that's kind of cool. Um, some people have ways to connect. I don't know, I was just telling Abby and her boyfriend that my heater in my house, I usually have it at like 66, 68, and I never have set it at 71, and my brother and my mom like it hotter, and my brother's always like 71. So ever since he passed away, I can't change my heater. It keeps going to 71. Isn't that bizarre? Anyway, so I like ghost stories because I know that there's something on the other side because I think I told you guys um, when I had my son, I had an out-of-body experience, and it changed my life. So that's what my movie's about, and we got entered into another film festival. We're going to be on the big screen in New York. So anyway, things are going good. Let's go back to what we were supposed to be talking about, right? So you guys that don't want to hear about ghost stories and crazy stuff, um, I know, oh, if you love ghost stories, maybe I should just do a couple of my ghost stories and name them ghost stories. Maybe we can just have a ghost story night. We could do that. Um, I can't do it tonight, but maybe I could do it tomorrow night. Do ghost stories live. And um, because people always want to hear ghost stories, I have some really good ones from working at the cemetery. And then I have one about when I took a listing. Oh my God, you guys, I took a listing. It was the house that we flipped. The little boy was literally really creepy. Anyway, so um, my gas bill was $800 from the heater. I hate, yeah, you know what? My gas bill is normally, I don't know what it normally is, but my gas bill story Friday night. I, you know, I hate to say this, but... Um, I'm going out tonight. Uh, I'm gonna escape from my mom and hide. But anyway, um, I, I, um, we will do a ghost story night. Maybe Saturday or Sunday night. Sunday night would be really good because I'm gonna teach the cram course on Saturday, all day Saturday. We start at 8.30, we end at five, and all day Sunday. And then I'm not teaching again until the weekend. No, wait, I don't know. I'll look. I, th I might do, I got my license, what do I do? I don't know. We could throw it in there, but then I'm just throwing it in there, throw it in there, and we're not prepared. Well, I'm always prepared, but anyway. So those of you who don't wanna hear all the crazy stuff, just move forward, fast forward to landlord, tenant, less or less E, and it says leases for one year or less, you have to know it's on the state exam. One year or less do not need to be in writing, but it makes good business sense to have everything in writing. Under the statute of frauds, any lease lasting longer than a year, so that's under the statute of frauds, longer than a year, from the date of signing must be in writing. California courts have held, have held that in event the lease is in writing. It must be signed by the lessor. It is not necessary, so the tenant doesn't have to sign. And the reason the tenant doesn't have to sign the lease is because the tenant has an, it, it, they have an implied contract. You have to know that. An implied contract means you did what the contract said. You may not have signed it, but you acted as if you did. So that's an intentional contract. God, where'd my dog go? I can smell him again. Jeez Louise. So it's not necessary for the, the leasee, the tenant to rent. Um, yeah, I'd go upstairs. Yeah. Um, the payment of rent and possession of the property is sufficient Hotels, motels, and other types of lodgings fall into the category of leases, even though the duration or use may be more shorter time. And eviction or termination is handled differently for, the, for these daily or weekly rentals. Um, that's awesome. You love my stories. Thank you. A lease from more than one year must be in writing. I said that already, but they have it in bold print. And signed by the lessor, if the lease is not signed, um, is not signed, moving in pays the, and paying the rent 
is an implied contract. I swear to God, my dog's farting again and I can't breathe at all. Um, I am not going to have him next to me when I do this anymore. Or I just can't give him those biscuits because those are... I'll even show you what biscuits they are because if you have a dog, whoa, is me. Rights and obligations of the parties. In addition to the minimum requirements, a number of contractual matters between a landlord and a tenant should be considered before entering into a lease. The importance of the, these factors increase as time periods covered by the contract increases. Certain points that should be covered are duration of the lease. How long are you going to rent my property? Because my people that are in my Irvine house, she loves the house. This is the second time she's lived in it. She lived in it when she had six kids. When she was moving back in a year and a half ago, it was so cute because the kids, her kids moved out. And when they found out they were moving in, she was moving back into my home in Irvine. They're like, we want to move back in. Um, so I don't know how many of them moved back in, but she's there with her new husband. And um, they take such good care of my property. They're the best tenants ever. And my rent is in the mail all the time on time. I could let, and she's paying like $2,000 a month less than she should be paying more than that. I just found out the rent in that community is $10,000 a month and she's paying seven and I'm still, I'm still clearing money. So you guys, when she moves out, I know Candy, isn't that awesome? When she moves out, I won't have to work. <laughs> I'll always work. I'm addicted to this stuff. Anyway, so um, the amount of rent and the matter of the payment. So how much are they going to pay and how are they going to pay it? Security deposit, assignment, and subleasing provisions. If you don't want them to rent your house out, then tell them you don't want that. Liability for injuries and repairs. Condition and provisions of the lease. Termination of the, ter termination of the lease or rental agreement and renewal or extension provisions. So the duration of the lease, there should be a certain statutory restrictions on terms of the lease. Agricultural land, you have to know this on the state exam, Agricultural land is 51 years. That's the longest you can lease it. Property situated in a city or town cannot be leased for more than 99 years. A mineral oil, a mineral oil or gas lease, lease cannot be longer than 99 years after the work begins. A minor or incompetent can, um, can possess a property only for the time a court has approved. Going on to the amount of rent. So the amount of rent, it's getting interesting in California because... You know, they're trying to um, control how much we charge for rent, trying to control how much. I mean, where did our landlord tenant, where did the landlord or rights go for property owners? So, by the way, California Association of Realtors, we fight for landlord, not landlord tenant laws, but we fight for property ownership rights. Because when you buy a property, you should be able to do, I mean, you own it, you pay for it, we pay taxes on it. I, I don't want to say you should be able to do whatever you want, because if people do whatever they want, they may build a hotel, a mini hotel on the lot next door to you. And there was a rule that passed that said people could um, take down their single family home and put in four units, like in a normal neighborhood. And that's because we have such a shortage in homes in California. And what I think they should do, but I'm not the, the know-all, but kind of smarter than the average person, I guess. Um, why don't we take all these empty commercial buildings and make a mini condos or, you know, some type of co-op to where you could have people living in them. Whoa! My dog's going crazy. I might have to go get it. Wilfred, come here. Come here. Come here. Who's he barking at? Why is he barking at you? I might have to go save. Wilfred, give me one second. Willie, come here. Come here. Why is he doing that to you? I thought he liked you. Come on, come on, it's okay. When he's wagging his tail, it's okay. He's just kidding. He just wanted to eat you for a second. He wanted to eat him for a second. Anyway, back. So see, you, you got to see my dogs, man. I'm telling you right now. If you come anywhere near me, I have heard of a few subleasing horror stories with people subleasing their apartment out and they live in different states. Well, the other, I okay, so now that you're talking about that, um, I have had property out of state and um, it was in Texas and it was in Texas and it was a duplex and I had a property manager there and Texas laws with landlords and managing companies really isn't very good. This lady, I mean, she's the one that made me not give it. It said, that's a good idea. I heard something about that, what people have done. Well, there's those scary movies about tenants. That makes you scared, right? 
Um, what happened was it was a duplex and it was across the street from a cemetery. And I, I know that because I had to go there because she was a crappy management company and she would tell me it was a duplex and she'd tell me, okay, you're getting $800 a month for each unit. And then she got, oops, this person moved out. Okay. Well they wrecked it. So you have to spend $1,500 to fix it up. And then you got to pay me $75 to put an ad in the paper to rent it out. And it's going to be vacant for this long. And then she'd get this one all done and people move back in. She'd go, oh no, now the other people moved out. So it was never rented out at the same time all the time because I believe that she was keeping one of my $800 and only giving me half of my rent because she was shady. And I will never, ever, ever, ever have someone else manage my properties. And if they're in another state, I won't, I won't have them in another state. Um, the property I bought on eBay in the property I bought on eBay, that's a whole nother ghost story situation. But anyway, um, I didn't rent it out. It just sat there vacant for three years and then somebody bought it and flipped it. Um, yay, mini story. Well, I told you guys about that one going on eBay, go on eBay and look for property and see what you find because I was really lucky, um, to go ahead. That's a good story. Which story was a good story? I went on eBay. Um, yeah, that's, I told that story. She knows that story. So I went on eBay and I was with, I was working with this lady who wanted to do all kinds of properties. And I said, okay, well, let's see what we can find. And we found that, yeah, we found, I got, you know, when I started bidding on it, I think it was only at like 3,200 and it kept going up and I don't know how I was lucky enough to get it for $4,000, but I did. And you know, it was super fun because the lady who was a real estate agent had a sense of humor when she took the pictures, like she took pictures and she had an arrow going down to the basement and she wrote, and she wrote dead bodies this way. So, um, it looked like the Amy, I don't know how to say that word, Amityville horror house, that one. Anyways, let's see if we can throw some more actual information at you before we get done. Exactly. But there's so many negotiations. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that goes on when you're doing stuff. It, it cracks me up that my mom says I'm a bad negotiator, that she's smarter than me. But she is getting stuff done for free. But that's because she's 91 and they all think she doesn't have anybody helping her. You're so you're so helpless. She's like, she's like a bulldog under that thing, man. She, you don't even know. Anyway, um, so we already talked about rights and obligations of parties, durations of lease. Now we are on amount of the rent. So the amount of the rent. So again, you guys, if you don't like the stories, just fast forward. And then when you want to get the information, just slow it down and listen to the good information that you need for your test. So rent is the amount of money paid for the use of using the property. It's important to state that both specific amounts of rent and when the rent is to be paid. So when is it going to be paid and how much? So my brother rented out my mom's house and said that the tenants could pay on the 15th because they get their paycheck on the 15th. Well, don't people get their paycheck on the 1st and the 15th? So we have, you know, we don't have to wait. So we pay it, then we are reimbursed by the rent. With periodic tendency, if the rent is to be paid in advance or any time other than the end of the term, it should be stated in the agreement. You guys, communication is key in this business. And even if you're not getting in the business as a real estate agent or you guys, property managers make a lot of money. Um, I just would never, I, you know, my brother and I were talking about doing property management but we did not want to have a trust account because when we first started our mortgage company, we had, we had to go through living hell on an audit for a trust account when all we were collecting is $35 for, um, so, oh, you want the story about the trust account? So here goes. When my brother and I started our mortgage company back in the eighties, what happened was we had to collect $35 in order to run credit. And when you're running credit for a lot of people, $35 adds up. Now the credit companies give you a receipt. It shows, um, do you need a broker's license to be a property manager? No, you don't. Good question. You're awesome. You love it. Thank you. So um, to be a property manager on the state exam, you have to be a broker because a broker is the agent. You guys are only the sub agent, but sub agents could be um, underneath. It says, it says just a salesperson. So you could be a salesperson under a broker because you always have to have a broker in order to do the leasing. But on the state exam, it just says broker. So anyways, um, my brother and I talked about doing property management at one point, but then you had to have a trust account and we don't want a trust account. Trust accounts are the kiss of death. And I've always said that from day one. And um, so with that said, when I said that to my brother, I go, there's gotta be a way 
that you could do a, be a property management company, but have the tenant pay the, the landlord directly on something like a sell or a cash app so that you don't have to touch their money. Because what happens is when you touch a client's money, you have to put it in the trust account because it's protected in case the broker gets sued. That's on the state exam also. So you wanna make sure you keep your money separate. You're not commingling it. So when we collected the money for the credit reports, this is what we did. And we collected the money for the credit report. We put it in the trust account. Then when the credit company sent us the bill for all these credit reports, then we paid the bill with the money in the trust account. Well, you can't do it that way. And I wasn't doing it. I was just a loan officer. Um, the administration of the office was doing it. My brother was, he was the broker. So the Department of Real Estate said, you can't do it like that. What you have to do, they slapped him on the hand and they were really nice about it. And they told him, this is what you have to do. You have to make a copy of the check, which we did from the client, put it in the file, because this is when you had that paper. And then you have to get the credit company to give you a separate bill for each and every report. Well, credit company doesn't want to do that. So the only way that we could do that is by taking the bill, highlighting the name of the one that the bill was paid from, put it in the same file, and then you had the copy of the check and you had the highlighted bill that was paid out for them and it had to match. If it was off by a dollar, you had to send the dollar back to the client, which makes sense. If it was short, you ate it. So when my brother did that whole audit with the Department of Real Estate, he goes, we're never having a trust account again. And I said, I 100% agree with you because the audit went on and on and on and he did nothing wrong except for he had that big bill without the highlight on it. And um, so when you're a property manager, you're collecting money from the client, you're putting it in the trust account and then you're paying. Now you can either pay it to their mortgage company for them and pay them the difference or you could pay them and they can pay their mortgage company. But the point of a property management company, the best part of it is they find tenants, they evict tenants that don't leave on time, and they do all the maintenance. So when there's a problem with the property, they have people that they know can get out there quickly. So it's not just about the money. So if you could do a property management deal where the landlord and the tenant do the money part, then you'd be in because you wouldn't have to have a trust account. But Property managers make of anywhere from, I would say, on the low side, 5%, on the high side, 10%. Depends on where you were at. Because I was paying that lady in Texas 25%. So she was getting a big chunk of my rent. So um, if you could look at the numbers. Where's my phone? Oh, my phone's being recorded. Um, if you look at the numbers, let's say that you're collecting $5,000 a month rent. Okay. And you get 7% of that. So that's what? 350 bucks that's what it is and if, so if you're collecting let's say the average is 250 dollars and you have a hundred people that you're making 250 dollars off of in property management yeah it's going to take you time it's not real estate is not overnight money unless you're doing wholesaling and if you're doing wholesaling you can't have a real estate license so i'm giving you way more than this landlord tenant stuff but if you don't want to learn about it Fast forward it, but I'm telling you, I know a lot about investing. I really have to find those girls who took the investment class. And what we are going to do is sit down and compare their notes with what I have done in my life and then do the investment class because a lot of people want to know how to own real estate because that's the way to the way to wealth. Anyway, so let's see what else we can tell you. So by law, rent becomes due only at the end of the term unless the lease agreement states otherwise. Well, that's interesting that it says that. Wait, we got to reread that. It says, if the rent is to be paid in advance or any at any time other than the end of the term, it should be stated in the agreement. By law, rent becomes due only at the end of the term unless the lease agreement states otherwise. That's bizarre. Pre-printed lease forms normally specify that rent is due on the first day of each month. Because quite honestly, when you really look at it, you pay rent and then you live. When you own a home, you live and you pay backwards. But in the book, it's saying that you, um, the opposite, which is bizarre because nobody ever says that. Um, the actual amount of the rent to be paid is the amount in the contract. Contract rent is the payable designated, um, designated in the lease contract at the time of the lease is signed and used for the property. This amount is distinguished from the economic rent. Economic rent is the amount of rent a property might be expected to yield if it was available for lease in the current market. So my economic rent on my house, believe it or not now, it's probably more like 
So the houses in the community are renting for between nine and 10,000. And I think the ones that are renting for 10,000 are the ones with an ocean view. And thank you very much. I have one of those. You can see the Queen Mary from my backyard in the distance. Isn't that cool? The Queen Mary. That's in Long Beach from Irvine. Isn't that neat? Anyway, so the economic rent and the contract rent of a given property might differ if the less or, that's the owner, is receiving more or less for rent than the property should reasonably yield. I've never heard the difference between contract rent and economic rent. Have you ever seen that? Mm -mm. Not on the test, so we don't have to worry about it. How about that? Taking our word for it. Rent is paid in advance and prorated in escrow. So when you sell your property, if you have, people forget about this stuff. When you sell a rental property, guess what? The landlord who's selling it to the new person, if they're going to keep the tenant in there, the landlord has to transfer the deposit from their account to the new owner's account because if, when the renters move out, you've got to give them back their deposit. And people forget about stuff like that. So any prepaid rent has to be given to the new owner. Remember that. Security deposits. This is important stuff. So the security deposit is usually refundable. The security deposit provides the landlord with funds to pay for damages or unpaid rent when the tenant vacates. Well, that's what it's for, but in California, they're trying to lower it to one month. There is this one guy in, um, he's over in San Francisco area. He's either a senator or an assemblyman. I'm pretty sure he's a senator and he hates landlords. And something has to be done. Nobody's fighting him. Like, he's just this little dude that's making up all these rules that goes against landlords. I don't know what he has against landlords, but he obviously has a beef against them. Will that be on the test, the security deposits? Yes, the security deposit is on the test. It's in my cram course because you have to know how much. So security deposit is two months if it's unfurnished, three months, I'm losing my battery. I knew that was gonna happen. Three months if it's furnished, and then one of the questions that asks you two months, three months, and it asks you furnished or not furnished, and then it says what determines the amount of the deposit, and the answer is furnished or not. So, security deposit provides the landlord with funds to pay for damage of unpaid rent when the ter tenant, when the ter I can't say it, when the tenant vacates. It is the landlord and the tenant's best interest to have an inspection, so you should have a walkthrough before they move in, and a walkthrough when you move out. You're welcome. And before, it, so on, so it used to be, they just changed it. You used to have a walkthrough when people move in and a walkthrough when people move out. Now they're changing the forms to have separate forms instead of the same form, which is interesting. So forms constantly change. So when you get your license, pay attention to the form changes because if they're gonna change, they normally actually change in December and in the summertime. So people don't realize that the forms change all the time. Every time there's a new problem, they come up with a, um, with a answer to the problem by coming up with putting it in writing okay so we're going to stop there because we're already at almost an hour can you believe that because we had more stories and we got sidetracked but if you have any questions feel free to text me i'll be teaching this weekend from 8 30 to 5 p.m if you guys want to get involved in the cram course you got to sign up on my website and then about every three weeks we do the class that's from monday to thursday at night for three and a half hours so have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you on Monday.